Okay, we're here at the Savannah Airport getting ready to board our plane to New York LaGuardia and um, we have about 17 people here with us and three of our party went on a different airline to fly first class and then we will also meet a group of people from Denver and Tel Aviv. So throughout this week we're going to show you some of the sites that we're going to see and we're going to introduce you to the different people who are traveling with us um, and kind of get their impressions of the Holy Land. So we just had a great prayer and we're looking forward to this flight and hopefully everything will be on time and go great. So we're just sitting here waiting to board our plane and we have yet to leave the area and Bill Ward has already bought. The eating fest begins. <laughs> Vacation is all about eating. Vacation is eating to go. Yeah. And it's not about. eating for me. No. Right? It's always the dream that I'll come back lighter than I went. Yes. And I just know I'm going to come back heavier. So I just, I just celebrate it and own it. So. All right. Okay, so it's about 11 or 11.30, and we're on the plane to Tel Aviv, sitting next to Trish and Warren. <laughs> and behind us are the general and his wife, and then here are some of our co-passengers. We have just a brief ten and a half hour flight to Israel. We're just getting off the plane in Tel Aviv. Here's our guide. And here's our people. After a night of flying. 15. There's Tel Aviv. All right, we have made it after 15 hours of flying, going through security twice, shoes on, shoes off, PCR tests, nasal swabs, um, security checks, movies on the airplane. I actually saw a great movie about the life of Jackie Robinson. I'll tell you about that later, pretty emotional. A lot of food, snack cakes, um, just got gets to the bus. We're all together on the bus. We get to the hotel, buffet, buffet, dinner. Um, and you can see we're looking at the back of t window of Tel Aviv and we are ready to go to bed. Shalom. So we're here at the Kidron Valley. So we're at the a Carmelite Monastery, which is the location, they believe, of where Elijah fought the prophets of Baal. Um, we had a great story about just his trust in God, um, but his fear of Jezebel, which I think is a common theme in many relationships. Um, but you're looking at the Kidron Valley, which is the most fertile valley in Israel and it runs all the way up to, it's the largest farming and agricultural valley, and it runs all the way up to Mount Hermon. Uh, we, this morning, got to see the palace of Herod in Caesarea, who, which was then taken over by Pontius Pilate, and um, we're now going to lunch. So thanks for traveling along with us. So, I'll ask that you repeat these words, if you will. I reaffirm my vow to love and honor you. I reaffirm my vow to love and honor you. Giving thanks for what has been. Giving thanks for what has been. And looking forward to all that will be. And looking forward to all that will be. I will continue to share the journey of life with you. In faith and in hope, in faith and hope, with God's help. With God's help.
Let us pray. Holy and wondrous God, as you accompanied our ancestors, so you journey with us today. When we enjoy abundant life and are held in your presence, we give thanks today that we stand in the company of the faithful, the grateful recipients of your steadfast love. Bless these couples in their life together. May they continue to grow in mutual love, extend forgiveness when they hurt each other, practice patience in adversity, set a table of hospitality, and be lifted in joy, all in service to your coming reign. Grant that we who have witnessed these reaffirmation of vows may find our own promises renewed in life and our faith strengthened so that in joy and love we may continue the journey set before us with courage and hope. May our love, may our lives bear witness to the grace we have received from you, God of our present, our past, and our future. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. How about you make us the bride? Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. Is there anyone who objects? No. Okay. You may you may reaffirm with a kiss. Good morning. It's Thursday and we're at the Mount of the Beatitudes Chapel. So it was in this region that Jesus preached his great sermon of the Beatitudes. And we've learned many amazing things like at a normal theater, the actors are here and they speak up to the people. But Jesus, because he spoke with authority, was at the top of the hill and spoke down to the people. Probably one of the most amazing things here is Israel's just kind of been opened up for tourism and people of every nation are here singing, praying, young and old. It's really beautiful and encouraging for the church across the world. All right, we are on a boat actually crossing the Sea of Galilee. And we just came from the Church of the Loaves of Fishes and we were at the Mount of Beatitudes, read the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and now we are on a boat that's probably similar to the fishing boats of Jesus' day and just having a relaxing journey across this great sea where Jesus actually called his disciples. just as he was, 
and other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. And he was in the stern asleep on a cushion and they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and sea obey him? Hello. Today we are in the, in the city of Beersheen, which is on the border of Israel and Jordan. And this is one of the 12 cities of the Decapolis, which were the 12, uh, 10 ancient cities. And it was actually the capital and the only one across the Jordan River in what is now Israel territory. As you can see, it's an incredible ruin of a city. Um, it was uh, here until about the 600s, and then an earthquake just knocked everything over and people moved out. But we have a hippodrome, we have gyms, we have a sauna, we have public restrooms, we have a theater, it's incredible. And as you turn and look and see the main street, so this was the main shopping area, um, kind of like the Magnificent Mile in Chicago. Up behind us is what is called a tell. And we learned about this, that in ancient times, um, one civilization would build on top of another civilization as, and as they deserted the land because of disease or if they were conquered, they just kept building until they had these artificial hills called tells. Um, finally, when we had the era of kings and leaders, they would build their palaces on top of those or fortresses so they could see the beautiful land around them. Now, the biblical link to this is that it was on the, the outer walls of this city that when King Saul and his three sons were killed in battle, they beheaded the three of them in the Old Testament and hung their heads here in the city. And the people of the tribe of Gad were so upset about this, that was one of the tri 12 tribes of Israel, that they came, took down the bodies, took down the heads, um, burnt them over a fire and buried the ashes. Um, so this is just an incredible privilege to be here. The technology is amazing, we're all amazed. We think we're um, progressive. Uh, we just have better electronics and technology, but these people were geniuses and it's really just an amazing um, city to look at. Thanks so much. This seems... Thank you. 
Okay, we are here at Qumran, and this is take three. We did two takes outside, but it's so windy that we you couldn't hear the audio. So we're here at Qumran, which is the location of a community where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now the Dead Sea Scrolls, you've probably heard that a lot, but that is the oldest known version of the Hebrew Bible. And Qumran was a monastic community where people lived, men lived for about 300 years and just dedicated themselves to learning, reading, and writing the scriptures. Well, in 300, the Romans came in and sacked Jerusalem, and they came out here to also sack the Qumran community. And so they hid their scrolls in some jars in a cave, and no one saw them. No one even knew they existed. And then in about 19, the 1940s, a young shepherd lost, was out here, lost his goat, threw a stone into a cave where he thought the goat was, and heard an unusual noise. He went and got his father. They went in, and there were clay jars with leather scrolls inside. Now, if you can believe this, they thought, great leather, we can make shoes out of these. So they took it to a shoemaker in Jerusalem, and he just happened to be an Armenian-speaking Christian so he could read Aramaic, and he saw how important these scrolls were, and the story goes on from there. We'll show you the, those, uh, the landscape in just a minute. But also, in addition here, right if we turn around, right across is the Dead Sea. And in the back of the Dead Sea are the hills of Moab. And so we have the great privilege of looking over to Mount Nebo, where Moses first saw the Promised Land. So we're having a great time in Jerusalem. We hope you're, and in all of Israel, we hope you're having fun following along with us. And today is just a glorious day. Thank you. Okay, these are the hills behind Qumran with the caves in which the Essene monks lived. These are the walls of their community. And then just turning around, you can see over the plain the dark blue of the Dead Sea and the hills in the back. The haze is a sandstorm from the countries of Jordan and Syria. And there over to our left, hidden in the haze, is Mount Nebo. Here we are at the Dead Sea, which is the lowest place on Earth. It has the lowest restaurant, the lowest bar, and then the lowest um, beach on Earth. So here's some of our people waiting to get in, and we will definitely get back to them and uh, see them floating because you're not allowed to actually swim in the Dead Sea because there is too much salt. People dig out the high salt mud and put it all over themselves for skin care. That man in the blue shirt is Bill Ward, trying to get in to the Dead Sea. Here goes Greg Vivinti. Yeah. 
I just wanted to give you a little look at our hotel, the main hotel we stayed at on this trip. And this is in Jerusalem. This is just a sampling of all the tour buses that pull up outside. Um, over there you can kind of see the city of Jerusalem. And then the lobby is always pretty busy. Last night I would say there were about 500 people waiting for rooms from all countries. Definitely pilgrims from India, Africa, the United States, Germany, Spain. And every gift shop here, of course, has lots of touristy things. And then all of them have gold and jewelry. And I think it's pretty serious uh, sales going on in there because I see a lot of people standing there with their wives at times or husbands. And then you can go over here and just see the many different countries represented. There's a beautiful lounge. We had worship there this morning. And then a courtyard. And then downstairs is where we eat. And here is just a sampling. This is just the dessert table half set up. Every meal has fruit for dessert as well as many other delicious things. Hope you enjoyed that little peek. All right, we finally made it into the walls of the old city of Jerusalem and we're right inside the Eastern Gate or the Lion's Gate. And we're at the Pools of Bethesda. And this is um, linked to the Bible story of Jesus when he came to the Pools of Bethesda in Jerusalem and there was a man who was lame for 38 years. And the legend was that when the water was stirred, it was being stirred by an angel and whoever got to the pool first was healed. Well, this poor man, of course, could never get to the pool first. So Jesus said, would you like to walk? And he healed the man and the religious authorities were angry at Jesus that he healed a, a, someone on the Sabbath. And it was, you know, the famous statement when Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And so this is the pools of Bethesda. Over here we have the Cathedral of St. Anne, who is the mother of Mary. And it's one of the few um, original cathedrals that was not, as we've learned over and over again on our trip, destroyed by the Persians in the 300s. And so in just a minute, you'll see another video of us singing in the cathedral, although our guide is worried about our singing because we haven't been really striking a good tune together. So we'll see. <laughs>
So we are in the old city of Jerusalem walking the Via Della Rosa, which is the way of Christ. And this is the path he walked um, during his trial and to the cross. We are headed towards the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And just to give you a feeling for the city of old Jerusalem, I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, we are at the Western Wall or the Wailing Wall. This is the woman's side, which is separated from the men's side by a wall. This is the outer wall of the Temple of Jerusalem and the place at which they believe is closest to what was the Holy of Holies. These are people praying and putting prayers into the wall. Hello, we are in Jerusalem at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is where they believe Jesus' tomb was and the, the cathedral is built over the tomb. But behind me, the man in the suit is the keeper of the keys for this um, church. And in the 10 hundreds or 1000s, when the Crusaders were here and when they left, they gave the keys to this church to a Muslim family. And since then, for over a thousand years, this Muslim family has gotten up every morning at 4 a.m. and unlocked the church and locked it back up at 8 p.m. at night. So it's just great to learn the history, amazing history of Israel. Okay, well, we've made it to our last day in Israel. We're actually flying out tonight. And right now we are at the church where Mary and Elizabeth met each other during Mary and Elizabeth's pregnancy. Um, earlier today, we started out at the tomb, the garden tomb of Jesus, which is kind of a secondary site that some people wonder um, if that's the true tomb of Jesus. And then we were at the Israeli Holocaust Museum, which was just incredible. So in a minute, we're gonna wrap up for this trip. We've had so much, just such a wonderful time, such a lovely spiritual experience, made a lot of friends, had a great guide, great community. Um, in a minute, we're gonna walk you out to the beautiful view that we have. But before I go, I just want you to know that Bill Ward just <laughs> broke a rule here and got in trouble by a Franciscan monk. It was the highlight of our trip. And so uh, we hope you've had a little bit of fun following us and maybe next time you'll come to Israel with us and just enjoy this wonderful history, cultural, and tradition that we've gotten to enjoy this week. Thank you.